Fallout, Far Cry, Saints Row, Skyrim, Dishonored, Destroy All Humans, and GTA San Andreas are just some games which have one thing in common. The follow NPC quest. A simple prospect, the quest starts, you must follow the NPC. Or halfway through, you must follow something or the NPC. So many games have this quest that I felt it was impossible not to make a video about. It's free real estate. So I have my character Velia here, and she has dialogue assigned to her. So the dialogue is really simple. It, she simply says, can I help you? And then you've got two options of goodbye, which ends the dialogue. Or you've got, can you give me a tour of the palace? And she'll say, sure, follow me. And she'll start the quest of palace tour. The palace tour quest currently has nothing on it. But the plan is to make this quest, when it's activated, her to run all the way up here. If you lose her, then the quest fails and she'll walk back. Otherwise, she'll walk into the palace here and then we can basically complete the quest or we can make her run around to different waypoints in order to give you the tour. But the prospect of follow the NPC will be the key one here. So normally, we go straight into creating an event and we try to customise it in some way. However, the follow the NPC is a little bit more challenging because you actually have to track the NPC in real time almost. So what we're going to do instead is in my narrative blueprints folder, I'm going to create a new blueprint of type actor called BP follow NPC controller. And this controller is going to handle everything it needs to about the task. It will handle tracking the NPC, tracking the player, and then it will complete the relevant nodes it needs to to progress the quest. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function in here called run and this is what we'll call from narrative to basically say run this controller and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go and get the player so we can track the player i'm going to promote it to a variable hidden away so we can access it later and now once we've got the player what we really need to do is begin the checking of the npc and the player's location so i'm going to create a new custom event down here called check distance and this event's going to be special because we're going to keep recalling this event over and over again. So just after my run, I'm just going to add in check distance like so. So in order for this check distance to work, we need to create a few variables so we can proceed with the quest. So the first I'm going to create is a variable called NPC to track, and I'm just going to inherit from my EP NPC. The next one I'm going to do is a float variable called max distance before fail. This will be the distance that if you get too far away from this, it will fail the quest because you've lost the NPC. But we're going to add a little feature in that means if you don't want that aspect, we can just, if you say it's zero, it won't take effect. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and get the NPC's location. So I'll just go get actor location like so. Then I will also get the player's location. Then from the player's location, I can drag off and a distance vector check like so. And this will basically get the distance between these two vectors and spit out a float so we know where it is. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to basically say, is their distance more than the max distance before fail? So if our if we are 100 units away from the NPC and our max distance is set 50, that's more than 50, so we'll fail it. But our optional argument is we might not want the max distance before fail. So I'm going to drag this in here and I'm going to check if this is more than zero. And what we can do here is combine them with an AND node. And this will basically say, have we got a max distance before fail, aka is it more than zero? And if it is, you can never be zero distance away from them because their physical mesh will take up that space. And are we more than that distance? If we are, then we can basically fail that quest. So what I'm going to do from here is I will drag off from true. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create a new custom event called fail too far. And I'll just call it from up here. And in here, we will get narrative and we will complete the narrative task. So what we need to do now is narrative. You don't fail a quest or a task. You complete it and then treat it as a failure. You complete a task and then you pick up that task in your quest and then drag to make it fail. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new task in my narrative called narrative task lose NPC. And the reason I'm calling it lose NPC and not lost NPC is lose NPC could be reused later down the line for when you're in a police chase or something. Lose the NPC. So the task will be lose NPC and the NPC name that I need to add will be the NPC to track and then I have the NPC's name as a variable stored on them. But you can use whatever you'd like. And then just after this fail, we can now destroy this because we've failed the task. So I'm going to create another custom event called end. And this will simply, at the moment, 
moment just destroy the actor, which will destroy this follow controller. Okay, so we have our first fail point, perfect. However, if we don't fail it above here, so we are in range of the NPC, then we can simply delay this. I'm going to delay it by 0.1 of a second, and then I'm going to recall the same function again. Now you might think, why are we delaying it and recalling it here? And that's simply because if you add this to event tick, your processor will be slamming this function as quickly as it can, checking the distance. But realistically, you don't need it to check that often. You need it to check every so often, but not every single processor tick, because then it's pointlessly checking the location when they've probably not even moved. However, this will check every 0.1 of a second, giving your CPU plenty of ticks it doesn't need to use. Much more efficient. So now that we've done this, we can fail it and we can keep checking it, but we've got no way to complete it. So I'm going to come down underneath this end here and I'm going to create a new event called check completion. And this will be the event we'll use to check whether or not we've succeeded. And this is going to need two variables inside of it. We're first going to need to get the distance between the player and the NPC that we've already calculated above. So we don't need to recalculate it. And this will be a float. Next, we need to get the NPC's current location. And again, we get this above, so we don't need to get it again to save some performance, like so. However, in order to check the completion, the completion of the follow NPC is the NPC has arrived at the destination and the player has also arrived at the destination. So we need to know where the NPC is going to. I'm going to create a new global variable called NPC destination of type of vector. And this will be where the NPC is meant to end up. But what I'm going to do here is on the NPC destination, I'm going to tick instance editable and expose on spawn. Expose on spawn basically means when we spawn this blueprint here, we won't have to set the variables afterwards. We can just set it directly on the spawn and it will save some nodes. And I'm going to do the same for all of these variables except the player. Because all of these variables will be populated, but the player will populate itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check if the player's NPC distance to the NPC is less than, and I'm going to say 150 or something. So that's 150 meters, which will take the zero point of the NPC and the zero point of the player and check if they're close. 150 is a good point, but you can reduce this if you want them to be right up close next to them. From this, I'm going to drag another and node off. And then I'm going to, just like we did above with the location, I'm going to do a distance check, but I'm going to compare it to their destination. So getting the current NPC's location, comparing it against where their destination so they need to end up, get the distance between it. And I'm going to say if it's less than, and because the NPC will be in the middle of it, I'm going to just say 50. So are they less than 50 units to their destination? And is the player 150 units away from the NPC? If these are both true, that means that the player and the NPC are roughly near the destination. Because the NPC has to be at the destination and the player is being checked against the NPC. So if the NPC is at the destination, the player is at the destination. And then we can drag off our narrative just like above. And this time, instead of the lose NPC, we need to create another task called follow NPC. And this task will be completed when we followed the NPC, like so. If they have arrived at their destination here and the quest has been updated, then we can simply come and call our end function. And now we just need to call our new check completion method in our check distance here. So I'm actually going to check it just before the branch here, before we have to recheck it and before we fail, just in case. I'm going to check completion here and I'm going to drag in all the nodes we, we need to. I'm going to drag the distance into the NPC distance here. And for the NPC location, I'm just going to drag their location into here as well. There we go. So now when this blueprint is spawned and we call the run method, it will get the player. It will set it as a variable so we can use it again later. It will start the check distance event. The event will first check if the player and the NPC have arrived at the final destination if it if it has then we'll just make it if the check completion succeeds then it will just destroy the blueprint late below it otherwise it will come straight on and it will now check if the NPC and the player are too far away, will it fail or will it not? If this is zero, aka you don't want them to ever lose the NPC, then it'll just come back and check the distance again, which will keep checking for the completion. And that's the bulk of the follow NPC. It seems a little complex at first, but it is really relatively simple. So next, we need a way to spawn this in narrative, because with this follow NPC controller, every time your quest requires you to follow an NPC, it will simply spawn one of these and destroy it once it's done. 
done with it keeping it all nice and self-contained so i'm going to go into my content narrative event and i'm going to create a new event in here and i'm going to call it any spawn follow npc controller and i'm going to just set the text to spawn follow npc controller nice and simple and this is where we start spawning it so the first thing i'm going to do is create a variable to say what speaker what npc do we need to track and i'm going to set that type of name and i'm going to drag that out and then i'm going to do a get all actors of class with tag and my actor class will be my bp npc and then all i'm going to do is get the first value of it because i shouldn't have multiple values then after this i'm going to now spawn the follow controller so spawn actor from class the class will be our bp follow npc controller and as you can see the variables that we tick on spawn are now available so we can drag the npc to track inside there i'll set the collision handling override to always spawn the transform i'll just split because it doesn't really matter where it spawns the max distance before fail i'm going to drag off and i'm going to promote to a variable so we can add it in narrative and i'm going to do the same with the npc destination now that we've done this our event is going to spawn the follow npc controller perfectly so all we need to do from here is drag off and call the run event that we added so that'll start it ticking along so the next part of this event what we need to do is we actually need to tell the npc to go somewhere you could have two events on it and just simply use the move npc event i've used in past videos but it felt more right to contain it so if you want to have two events to make this quest run one to move the npc and one to make it follow then you don't need to do this next step i'm going to combine it and semi duplicate the work because because it feels nicer to me to only have one event to control it to drag this spawn along slightly and i'm going to promote this npc to a local variable i'm just going to call it npc and i'm going to take the npc over here and i'm going to get its ai controller like so and then from this i can drag off and say move to location and then the destination we already have so i can plug this in here the acceptance radius i'm going to set something like five just so it's got a little bit of leeway and then something i want to expand mine with i'm going to add a boolean into the variables called run and this is going to basically set the speed of the ai to whether it needs to run or walk to the destination so that's going to improve the quest for everybody anyway so on my npc i already have a function called set speed and this basically takes in a running. If they're running, then it will set the speed to be a, a value. Otherwise, it will set it to be a slower value for them walking. You can just do the same logic inside the event or create the event like I have. I'm going to plug the run event into it and that'll decide whether or not they're running. And then from there, we just hit the return node. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, it is a hectic event, but it's really, really simple. Start the event and find the NPC we need to track. Add it to a variable so we can use it later. Spawn the follow NPC controller passing in all our variables tell it to start tracking get the npc and make it run to the location run or walk and then that's it so now's the time to compile our quest together so the first thing i'm going to do on this quest start is i'm going to make it spawn the follow npc controller so i'm going to come in add an event and i'm going to click spawn follow npc controller and you'll see all our variables here the npc to track is velia the max distance before fail i'm going to set it to 3700 and you might wonder why it's that amount i've got that in the past so i know that's okay and the destination for me in my personal map is this value here and i want it to run i'll take that the way i got that value is i went to my destination where i wanted it to be i pressed ctrl p and found my bp npc and i just dragged in into the map and got their location like that right click copy and paste and that's where i want them to end up i think they'll end up about here after we've done that we can drag off from here and then this is where we add all the new tasks we created earlier so i'm going to create the first task of follow npc here the npc to follow will be velia and the description will simply be follow velia to the palace and then instead of quest state one i'm just going to simply drag off and succeed the quest you followed velia and the description will be you followed velia however i'm also going to drag off from this quest start and i'm going to add in the lose npc and the npc name will be velia again but i'm going to take hidden this time i'm going to hide the description and i'm going to drag from here and click the fail quest if we complete the task follow npc npc velia then it will complete the quest otherwise if we complete the task lose npc it will fail the quest and in here you lost velia. so all i'm going to do here is if we fail the task i'm going to tap into the events and i'm just going to call my existing move npc variable here and i'm just going to set her destination back to where she was there and i'm going to tell her to run 
to simply walk to the destination and not, but you can also teleport her if you need to. And I'm going to copy this event here. And I'm also going to add it to my success because this NPC will be used for some more things later. So whatever happens, she'll run back to where she needs to be. And one other thing I'm going to do is if we fail the quest, I'm just going to instantly tell the game to forget about the quest. So act like we've never done it before. Because then that way, when we fail the quest, we can simply retry it again. So now if you walk up to her, to Velia, and start the quest, you will see she will run up to the, the palace to give you a tour. But if I run the opposite way, as she's running up there, it will fail the quest. Oh no, because we've lost her. So instead, I'm now going to come up to her. You can see she's walking back to her destination. And I'm going to retry it again and say, hello, can I help you? Can I have a tour, please? And she'll go, yeah, sure, follow me. So if we follow her this time, when she arrives at her destination, provided we don't lose her, you will see she will stop. Perfect. And if I go up, it'll say, quest succeeded. And now she's walking home. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen, all done. If you have any other ideas, please comment below. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.